Hello and welcome to this episode of Kitchen Pedagogy. In this video, I want to talk about the need to have a really intelligent blend of retrieval practice activities. If we really want students to remember and check their understanding in a, in a complex way, it's very often the case that the knowledge that we want students to have is, is woven together into a, into a fabric of some kind of schema, which could be, say, the narrative of a period of history or a set of processes in science or a whole process in geography or the understanding of a, of a key text in, in English literature or some, some maths problems. And each curriculum scenario has its own way in which we assimilate that information, make sense of it in relation to concrete things that we, we know and understand and more abstract ideas. And that's, that's complex. So the extent to which retrieval practice helps you to do that needs to be thought about quite, quite carefully. Retrieval practice serves the purpose of strengthening our capacity to recall key bits of information to develop something we might call fluency so that we can use information when we need to, either to just discuss ideas, to share our understanding, or to produce something like an essay or something like that, or to solve some problems where we're using the knowledge we already have. So retrieval practice is rarely useful in the form of, you know, what's the answer to this? And what's the name of so-and-so? We're usually using that knowledge as part of something more complicated, or at least that's the destination. So we have to think hard about the way retrieval practice allows us to get to that point. Now, it can be useful to just recall specific isolated facts. If those are things which are just new or, or we just need to know them, and I've, I've done lots of that myself, just knowing some specific dates or the names of certain compounds in science, or can I just remember the key characters in a play? Can I just remember them? Do I know the name of Henry VIII's wives? Is an often an example I use when I'm doing my training because it's something which people sort of think they ought to know, but often they don't know all, all names. But of course, just even in that context, Henry VIII's wives, we're not learning about that so that we can say the names of Henry VIII's wives or even know exactly what happened to them just along the mnemonic divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. It's part of a richer array of knowledge, a schema which has got purpose, it's got a narrative structure, cause and effect. And if we're talking about a problem solving scenario, it's seeing how an idea links to something else, which is often what we're trying to do. So we've got to make sure that we don't re reduce the retrieval practice routines down to only focusing on small isolated bits of information, which then reinforces those connections and the students can generate a response if they're called to, but they don't know then how to apply it to something else. So for example, if you were to learn uh, the reactions of metals and you have to say, what happened to start, you know, what are the metals? I, I've come across students who could tell you what the reactions of the metals were. Uh, they could say metal plus acid makes salt plus hydrogen but they actually weren't entirely confident about what metals are, what's a non-metal, what the properties of metals are, to give me some examples of some metals. Is zinc a metal? What about silicon? You know, is it, and, and knowing confidently these are metals, these are not metals, is sodium a metal? Um, and knowing that those things is part of a retrieval practice, but then that might then lead into knowing the reactions of metals. But Where's the concrete home for that? Now, if you've reacted some metals in some acid and you've actually done some experiments and you remember that zinc was one of the metals and hydrochloric acid was one of the acids and there were some hydrogen bubbles that came out and we learnt that the thing we'd made was zinc chloride, then we've got a concrete example where we're saying, what was the example that we used? And the retrieval is, well, it was zinc reacted with hydrochloric acid and we made zinc chloride. And hydrogen and that's a retrieval of a concrete example and that's an example of the general case which is that metals plus acids make salt plus hydrogen and zinc chloride is the, is the name of the salt so we're, we're weaving together a recall of something we've experienced and we're talking about a concrete example it could be that if we're talking about the, the scenario of Henry VIII's wives you know what's the key knowledge there well it could be that you're saying 
what's the the key reason that Henry um, divorced Catherine of Aragon? And that's not a simple one word answer. There's a complex answer to that. There's a detailed answer to that. And the dates, the names, the places might be part of that retrieval. But we also need students to be able to say, you know, something like explain to your partner or tell the story of Anne Boleyn and how she came to replace Catherine of Aragon. So tell that story. And in telling that story, let's say my partner has got some source that they can check, say some kind of booklet or textbook or knowledge organiser, so that they've got some verification tool. But me, as their partner, is just saying, so I think what happened was that Henry was married to Catherine of Aragon, but because she was Catholic and that links to Rome and, and the power of the Catholic Church and because she didn't have a son and I, and I don't air my knowledge. And then Catherine, Anne Boleyn was there. And why was she beheaded though? And I'm, now my, my friend can then check whether I've got, I'm getting some of the details right. But it's, this is a retrieval practice opportunity. Another time, it might just be you know, some quiz questions or I might self quiz. And of course, then I want to come to do some writing. Now writing re relies on all sorts of retrieval. I have to remember to use phrases like at first or to begin with or initially or something which gets me started. And I have to have knowledge of even just components of grammar and sentence structure, which is something I'm, I'm practicing. So anything I'm practicing, which is something I already know is a form of retrieval because I'm having to use knowledge that I've already got. But I'm also having to think like, who, who, who was it? What do I say next? And so a piece of writing embeds retrieval. So we have to think like that's not separate. That is part of a matrix of retrieval practice. So I need to, I need to know that the knowledge I can re retrieve for a quiz is knowledge I can bring to bear in a piece of writing. And sometimes students don't make that connection. They, they can do quiz questions, but when they come to write, they forget to check the knowledge in the same way. So the diet of retrieval practice and the way you conceive of it needs to be varied. And it needs to have a kind of repertoire, a kind of diet, which the students experience over time. And ultimately, they need to be able to do it for themselves. So this is where things like elaborative interrogation are useful. And teachers don't often like this technique because you can't see it. It's, it's in their head. You know, what, what's happening? Why is this? Self-explanation. Can you explain why? Can you, can, you, can you tell the story? Can you explain this process? See if you can mentally rehearse the key steps in this process like what were these one can i remember it and then check did you get it right now training students to check by generating a response and then evaluating if they were right is such an important retrieval practice mode and then you review that with the class and say how did you get on and then you might probe it a little bit now that's important that you do that because the verification is up to them. And of course, they might cheat themselves. But of course, they know that there is other processes later where there's going to be a more verif verified approach, which is teacher uh, led. But if you're not training to check their own knowledge, they, how do they get to do it? And of course, if you're writing something, you need to constantly be saying, is this good? Have I included everything I need? Is it right? And that automatic process of self checking and, and is it as part of the learning process. So just make sure that when you're thinking of retrieval practice, you think of it as a wide set of ideas and that you vary the diet of the types of retrieval activity you engage your students in and make sure you're building their agency to check their own knowledge and understanding all the time, whatever type of technique you're using.